I'm rather hoping that there is not too much wind in today's walk. I'm coming down to the seafront here in Worthing to walk along the sand whilst the tide is out and talk about fame, YouTube fame. I do get noticed, not all the time, but from time to time if I'm wandering down into the town locally, I do get noticed. People say, they come up to me and they say, Richard, I, they sometimes they call me, excuse me, excuse me, are you Richard Vogues? Are you the Bald Explorer? Sometimes people know me by name and sometimes people know me as the Bald Explorer, which is very lovely. And, and I've never had anyone say a nasty comment. Everyone's very congenial. They're very polite and they're very interested. And it's rather wonderful, actually. It isn't too much that you wander down into the town and you're noticed by everybody. I mean, the thing is, you're probably noticed by more people than approach you, of course. Probably noticed a lot more than uh, people even would dare to speak to you. And also, if you're rushing a pass, you know, somebody in a cafe looks up and goes, oh, there's that bloke on YouTube that I watch. Very often people, I have put my stuff on Facebook as well, so very often say, oh, I watch you on Facebook, which is interesting to know how they come about watching me, or indeed Julia, and often they say, where's the lovely Julia? And I say, well, she's not with me today, she's dealing with her children and all of that. Let me just show you the view that we've got here, because it is rather lovely, coming down onto the seafront first thing in the morning, look at that. Um, I did double check that the tide was out. It's coming in now, it'll be in at lunchtime. It's fascinating because people often think the tide just stays the same. And I'm always surprised when they say that. I've got to navigate. Here's the pier, look, in the distance. I'm just navigating across these. Uh, I've only got ordinary shoes on, so I'm trying not to get too wet. People go out. There's a guy up there with a surfboard. He's obviously been out early in the morning. Anyway, yes, so fame, is it, can one manage it? Yes, is the answer at this level. I don't know what it's like for some of the bigger people on YouTube who have very large channels. It must be very difficult. Although, of course, a lot of my stuff is local within Sussex. So it is amazing that you can go to all sorts of different places in Sussex and somebody out of the nowhere will just come up to you in the most least unsuspecting moment. And it's always when you're not ready for it that they say, oh, I've seen you on YouTube and that they enjoy the videos. Very often though, they're not necessarily up to date with the videos, that's quite striking. And that teaches me quite a lot about how people watch the channel, that people are watching, many of them have watched some older walks and they'll tell me things they like. And that can be all sorts of things that I've done. Things where I've been to the Regency Town House, for example, in Hove many years ago, and we did that. But things where I've interviewed people, obviously walks in the country have been uh, one of those things. And then other things like the coupling stuff that we're doing. People say, oh, I really like those sort of debates, which is nice because real people, people you actually meet, as opposed to, and I'm not saying they're not real, the comments which come from all sorts of people from all over the world, but you've never met them. You don't really know who they are and what their life story is or any of that. So it's very interesting to get real comments from people who've actually taken the time to shake you by the hand, possibly done a selfie with you and, and basically pat you on the back for what you do. There's, there's some amazingly um, wonderful and supportive people out there. Something is starting up, making a bit of a racket in the background. I don't know whether you can hear that. But it's lovely to come out on this stretch here, this quite large stretch of land that's exposed by the sea. You can't really see them, they're a bit too far away, I should think, but there's some rowers. I think they're rowers, actually, not... To, I said surfboarding, but they're actually rowers. 
in the old sort of Henley on Thames type rowing on the sea. It doesn't look that placid, although it's not rough, which is nice. We've got the seagulls picking amongst the stones here as well. I'll give you a bit more of view of the flats here. It does make Worthing look very different when you've got this expanse and the houses and there's that god awful um, block of flats in the distance there. But it does make Worthing look very different from the coast. Julia and I happened to spot in town in an art gallery a painting, I forget the artist's name now. She did a number of things with what looked like plasticine characters against uh, a flat background, so making the paintings more 3D. But she also did one which was clearly out from the sea, looking in um, along this coastline. It was a very idealistic thing and quite modern because it had Splash Point, which has now rocks in there, very different than what it was, and a whole load of very, um, what should we say, fantasy Georgian houses along the seafront. Um, I guess from perhaps a time when there was that, that, and then you would see up to Salvington Windmill, but all of that was exposed and had no houses on, which of course it's now. So it's very idealised, I suppose, Worthing in an ideal sort of fashion, but it was very lovely, very lovely. It's quite expensive to buy a print of it. It was about 800 quid, so out, well out of my reach, but it was a lovely, lovely painting. So going back to my main theme of, to, of today's walk, uh, that of fame, becoming famous, how do you deal with it? As I say, the bigger channels, I'm not sure if, if they've got a global, more of a global audience, perhaps, oh, that was a drop of rain. Perhaps they don't struggle quite so much um, as you would think, like a film star who has millions of people who are interested in them. They could probably walk down any town centre and be recognised, but perhaps somebody who's got millions of followers would not be quite so recognised. I've come to a bit of a dead end here because I, I don't know that I can get across here. Uh, the I know the tide is coming in and I don't want to get trapped or pick my way through all of this because that's quite uncomfortable, but there are certain channels where the water comes in as you can you can see here, and I sh I, perhaps I should have put on uh, walking boots. So maybe I'll, I'll walk back. <laughs> I was hoping to go a little bit further, but I can see that I am likely, as the tide slowly comes in, it's very deceptive though, because it can come in at quite a lick, although it's not supposed to be fully in until lunchtime, but this spread can happen quite fast. Yeah, so I don't know. Uh, it'd be interesting if there are any large um, channels and what they do about fame and things. I mean, I wouldn't say by any means of the imagination that I'm in any way famous, um, but perhaps other than not even famous locally, but recognizable. And that's a nice place to be where people are polite, as I say at the beginning. But the thing about all of that is it becomes something that I think young people are desirous of. In years gone by, it was people wanted to get onto a talent show and, and then just become famous. Famous for the sake of being famous, not famous for putting in, in any work, but just famous and, and f have fortune as a result of it. Um, a bit like some of the socialites um, that we have in this world, the it girls as they used to be called. They're famous because they happen to be rich so they don't need to work and they go to all the the right places to get into the media in some form by knowing famous people I suppose. I don't really know how it works and you'll be able to correct me I'm sure. Although the comments are off and uh, that's a, a useful device at the moment for me. But fame, for the sake of fame, I think is a strange concept because 
I would think that you need a... The fame is, in a way, a, it can be a double-edged sword, it can be a nuisance, because I'm very much aware, for example, that if I go into town, I need to look fairly respectable, because if people start recognising me and I just go down in my shabby outfits, as I used to, uh, without making an effort, and then somebody comes up and says, oh, are you Richard Bowes? I, I enjoy your channel. And you think, oh, I'm not really making an effort. And actually yesterday I came down, as I often do, just to stroll down to the seafront, to have a quick walk around the pier, which is very lovely to do. Um, especially if I've been in the house filming, as I have been filming my unusual tales from my other channel. And I'd been in all day, it was a lovely day, and I came down and I was hailed. Hello, are you the Bald Explorer? Yes, oh, and then they wanted to buy me a drink, which was very nice, and we had a long old chat. Two things that, was, that impressed me. One was that they, one of them said, I'm impressed that you even stopped or had the time to talk to us. And I said, well, of course. You know, if you watch my channel, I'll talk to anybody at the end of the day, um, as long as they're polite and friendly and are not uh, <laughs> going to rob me blind, I'll talk to anybody. And, 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 you know, debate a subject or if they disagree with me, it's very interesting to hear their point of view in real life. It's very difficult to do that online in comments because people tend to suddenly start calling you names and you know they've lost the argument when they're... If they're being rude or personal, you know, they don't really have much of an argument um, because they, you shouldn't need to have to resort to rudeness in order to put your case uh, across. So that was very nice. The second point was a, a, a chap said, I'm, I'm impressed by your smartness, that you make an effort. And um, I said, well, you know, my feelings is that we no longer do make that effort. We're, we're in a world in which, oh, it doesn't really matter anymore. We can just dress in a slack way. And that's entirely up to other people, of course. I said, but for me to stand out in my channel or to be a little unique. I think you sometimes need to have something, whether that's what you wear, um, or whether that's a, 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 a prop, like a, a cane or an umbrella or a, a hat, or I don't know, something. It's good to have something that makes you stand out. And so by wearing a waistcoat, cravat, and, and dressing up a little bit old school, I hope that people do notice and it makes me memorable, which I suppose adds into the fame bit when you're wandering down the town and they see you. As the guy said, you're just like you are on the channel. And that's, I think, it's always nice. If you've seen somebody on, say, films or the telly and, or the interviews and they, they come across as very nice and friendly and erudite and um, genial and all those sort of um, verbs, um, adjectives even um, and and then in real life you meet them and they're completely different I don't know you feel a little betrayed don't you so I do think that with YouTube it's very important to still be yourself and come over as best you can that's my that's my thoughts anyway there's a chilly wind but there's elements of blue skies coming out so I'm I'm hoping for a nice day. I've got some more stories to write. I'm f thoroughly enjoying writing and conceiving the stories. Sometimes I'm reading them and sometimes I'm trying to memorise them and then retell them. It would be lovely <laughs> if one's fame was big enough to be able to tour around from town to town and put on a theatre show of telling stories. I'd love that. That would be a great challenge. But I don't know that people... My fame is... My fame, I'm talking as if it's a real thing, um, is, is not, you know, is, not, is nowhere near that at all at the moment, which I guess in some ways it's a good thing. Going back to that sort of essence of youngsters wanting now to get into YouTube, I hear that that's a, that's a thing, a career thing that people are thinking um, we want to get into YouTube as a career. And I think in some ways that's a bit of a worrying development because it's, I think it's necessary that YouTubers 
like me and many, many of the others, of course, all the more successful ones, reveal the difficulties that you have because it isn't all glamour by any means. I mean, television and feature film is far more glamorous because there are a team of people that do stuff for you. For example, the script and the set and the filming and all of that, if you're the presenter. Yes, you've got hard work to do your individual job, but when you're on YouTube, unless you are very big and making a lot of money, you're doing it all yourself. You're doing that conceiving of an idea. You're getting to the location, you're building whatever sets or props you need, you're trying to fathom it all out uh, and then you've got the presentation and the filming of yourself and perhaps filming in public where you might be a little bit nervous and all of that and it isn't an easy job and then you've got to build an audience and then there's all the comments and that side of things which affects people on their mental health, the, uh, the business of uh, what people think of you and very often they'll say in no uncertain terms, just trying to find how to get across this, this little bit of water stream here that's coming in, as I say, um, and I'm not succeeding. I think I'll try here. There we go. Um, yes, it's, it's not as easy as it looks. And of course, when you raise your head above the parapet and people are able to watch you, you put yourself up for all sorts of um, abuse, as well as all the kindness and everything, which I've spoken of where people do meet you. And it's, a, it's quite a thing that I think a lot of people are not prepared for. But I guess the other side, the flip side of YouTube is that you're starting small and gradually increasing your followership. And if you stay true to it, it can work. I might have to take a running jump here. I've got myself in more of a pickle than I expected, so let's hope that the microphone doesn't fall off. Oh. Ooh. There we go. So, um, fame is not all it's cracked up to be, and YouTube is not all it's cracked up to be, and, and people can give up very quickly and think it's not for me, I haven't achieved anything, or they can feel very down about themselves. So it's a strange thing. And sometimes the audience, some members of the audience, because there's some weird people out there, think they're helping and, and they're really not. You get, uh, if you're a newbie YouTuber, you'll get so much unsolicited advice or people asking you why you haven't done this or they'll criticize something about your feature um, and how you do stuff. They've never walked in your feet. They don't know your life story. They don't know how you've got to where you've got to. And so that's another thing about fame. And I occasionally do talk about the comments and people's attitudes to it because my philosophy is I'm here to put up some entertainment. I just want to entertain people like on television or in a feature film. I don't put it up to have criticisms or to be given unsolicited advice, but people love to do that. I never quite understand why comments and things were even a thing, and why you can't be like a television and just put it up. And if people don't like it, they don't like it. So yes, fame is a, is a strange old thing and it comes in different modes, I think. Um, but if you're strong-willed, and you don't care what people think, um, thick-skinned, <laughs> you can deal with it. But as I say, mostly what I've encountered in the real world, which to me is what is most important, is that people are very nice. So if you are thinking of setting up a channel or doing something and you're slightly frightened of what being recognized is going to be like i would say that on the whole people are actually very supportive um, i've elected at the moment on some of my videos these vlogs to turn off the comments um, partly because i'm not interested in the unsolicited advice but also i don't need that dopamine is it dopamine whatever it is that hits that thing about continually checking what other people have said i'm not that bothered at this stage. I've been doing it fairly long. I'm not really that bothered. I just want to make the content. I want to entertain people 
and um, I don't want to be continually thinking, oh, I better check the, com I better answer the comments, I better communicate with everybody. I want to concentrate on making the stuff. That's why I've got into it. So there we go, that's my thoughts on fame. Let's have a look at the pier and see how we're doing. How about that? It is amazing, you come down here on so many different days and it feels so very different. And I love it. I do love it. It's nice. It's lovely if the area that you live changes and, and if you walk around it enough, you start to see all the little changes, which makes it more fascinating, I think. Anyway, I will head back and upload this and hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, I'm trying to vlog each day, bringing perhaps a different subject to talk about or observations of the town. So I'll leave you with that pier and I will catch you next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye. <laughs>